Hi everyone and welcome to day 10 of the Live Well with Marissa at Home Challenge. I want to thank you guys so much for enjoying all these different workouts with me so that your body can stay well and healthy while we're at home. As we start today, feel free to grab a yoga block if you have one. If not, please grab a beach towel that you can fold up, so something thicker, which is why I suggested a bigger towel, or a blanket or a firm couch cushion. We're gonna get started on our backs. So today I'm gonna walk you through a few different inversions, all right? Shoulder stand is gonna be the first one that we do, which starts with a supported legs up the wall. So go ahead and grab your block. Now, if your body's like real cold or you're brand new to this, maybe watch first and then join, especially when things become more advanced. You're gonna place your block, folded up towel, all right, or firm couch cushion underneath of your low back and the very top of your butt, just like a supported back bend. From there, allow your knees to come into your chest one at a time, and then you're gonna raise your feet up to the sky. Now, your feet can be relaxed, they can be flexed, they can be pointed, you can play with your feet. And this is called supported legs up the wall. So we call this this pose because normally you would take your legs up a wall, but we're supported by the block, so it's also the same version. It's also something you can do before going into plow pose or shoulder stand. Now what's important for shoulder stand is that one, your neck feels healthy, and then so does the back of your shoulders and your traps. If at any point you're feeling tension in those areas, then just come out of the pose or don't even do it. Feel free to watch first. Now you can keep your block under you to start or you can remove the block. I'm gonna remove the block just to show you how to bring your hips up. For those of you that have the block are simply just going to pick up your butt from the block, okay? So I'm gonna remove my block, your choice if you wanna join. Legs up the wall, by the way, can be really, really nice to release tension. You can stay in it for a long time. Shoulder stand, legs extend, sarvangasana. If you have the block under you, pick up your butt if you want to. Keep your head still. So again, if you're not sure what to do, watch first so that way you don't hurt your neck. Push into your palms, raise your butt up, and catch your hips. Now this is another supported version where I'm holding my hips in my hands and I feel really supported by my triceps and my shoulders. Now in order to go further, keep your legs up or even bend your knees and get your shoulders underneath your back. So now you're really letting your butt sit in your hands. So then as you bring your hips over your shoulders, you extend your legs up high. And then this right here is shoulder stand. So when I'm in this pose, I don't have any tension in my neck or my shoulders and I feel safe and well. If that is not how you feel, then please get out of the pose or don't even do it. Sometimes it feels nice to bring the hands further up the back. This applies more pressure to the back of the head, shoulders and neck, so you wanna be careful. And then to release out of the pose, again, you can open your legs, you can keep them closed, you can bend your knees, so many different things you can do. Only if you feel safe, well, and healthy though. To get out of this pose, whether you're on the block or not, let your knees bend in. Now, super careful, hold on to your back as you lower it inch by inch by inch. Use your core, use your arm strength, Head stays down, exhale, hands down, and feet down. Good, now let your head turn from side to side. Exhale, breathe out. Nice job. So those are two inversions you can do on your back. Legs up the wall, also known as waterfall pose. You might have heard that before, and then shoulder stand. Another thing with shoulder stand is if you're just really uncomfortable doing the pose, you can always put a blanket underneath your shoulder blades to elevate them as well. Again, not something that I personally teach, but it's something that I've seen before that does help people. So those are the two inversions on your back. And notice how after each, I took some time before I went right into them and took a few breaths. Really important to recover. All right, the third inversion we're gonna work on is tripod headstand, so shirshasana. There's two version of versions of headstand I'm gonna show you. Then I'm gonna show you forearm stand and then handstand. 
So again, they're progressing in levels. So the first one, you're on your back, legs are in the air, so your legs are over your face, meaning that your head's below your heart, so you're inverted, all right? It's the same idea with shoulder stand. Again, the body's moving in a different direction. And then with this pose, we have to invert ourselves by using our core strength and our shoulders. So first version, bring the hands closer to your knees so that your shoulders are stacked on top of your wrist. Engage your arms, bring your head forward of your fingertips. Exhale the top of your head down. So you'll kind of notice it's gonna mush my bun. Now a lot of your elbows fan out, so hug them in. Put pressure in your head and walk your toes in. So now your tailbone is elevated. From here, stay, you're inverted. Use your hands, push down. One kneecap to one tricep, maybe two kneecaps on each tricep. See if you can get your toes to touch and here's your tripod headstand. Now to go further, you have a few options. Option one, bring your knees together off of your triceps and let them hug into your core. Option two, you can start to stack your butt as your knees hug in really, really tight. Now you can either press your feet straight up from there, or I find it helpful to drive my knees up first to stack everything. From there, my legs extend to the sky. Now to come out of the pose, you can return with your knees right to your chest and then place your feet down. Or pike, send your butt forward as your toes reach back and then all the way down. Again, one knee to chest, maybe you don't use your elbows and then the other knee to your chest and then maybe you just push your feet straight up. You can always open your legs, close your legs, you can split your legs, whatever you wanna do, point, flex your toes. And you can always just lower one leg down and then the other. So again, feel free to hit pause and rewatch any of this, as I know some of this information is very new and some of it may be really challenging. If you're more advanced, maybe you play with eagle legs in the air as well, or even a form of bound angle or lotus. Again, those are stuff I'll show you in different videos, just not today. Second variation of Shir Shasana, which is headstand, is palms touch, elbows face your knees. Interlace your fingers and then receive the back of your head in your palms. Notice I've opened up my palms so the back of my head can go into my palms. The crown of my head's gonna hit the earth as I cup the back of my head and I push down. So look here, you'll see my shoulders, one, two, three, activate. Curl the toes, lift up. Now my pinky fingers are doing work and so are my forearms and I'm gonna shift my hips forward. From there, you can pull one leg in and maybe hover and come right back down. Pull one leg in, hover, come back down. Maybe you pull both knees in or maybe you come to your big toes and then start to slowly inch up. And again, that takes control and practice, a lot of core and shoulder strength. So everything about my body is super tight right now. And then to get out of the pose, you can bring your heels to your butt. Don't dump into your back though. Pull your knees in real tight and then even land right in child's pose. So let's go ahead and take a child's pose as our hands move back to our feet and rest. Again, feel free to hit pause or rewind so that you can do this again. But please remember child's pose is really important each time. Good, slowly rise up. Now what's important to remember about these poses is that if your neck is hurting you, you're probably not doing something right. You also could just have some very minor muscle tension because it's new for you to put pressure on top of your head. So just a few things to consider, and if you ever have questions about that, shoot me a message because I can always help you out. So now that you've gone through headstand, I'm gonna show you forearm stand, also known as Penchamayarasana. I do have how-to videos on my YouTube channel of both of these poses, even handstand, so that way, headstand, forearm stand, handstand, you can really dive into a little bit deeper than then just brief knowledge that I'm giving you here. Good, forearms come down onto the ground, curl your toes, lift your butt to the sky. Press down into your forearms and then notice how I can push away from the earth. So do you see that space that I'm creating here? Now, very slowly, once you have room, raise your right leg up to the sky. 
Good, exhale, lower your leg. Raise your left leg up to the sky and hold it, and then slowly lower down. Keep pressing down into your forearms, create space. So notice I'm not sinking in, I'm lifting my head. And then exhale, drop your knees, lower your shins, and rest for a moment. So that might be where you stay for forearm stand. Possibly you go further into the pose. I'll show you what it's like to raise a leg. I can't press into this pose, but I can offer you a slight hop. All right, so place your forearms down onto the earth. And you can do this pose with palms flat, fingers forward. You can also do this pose with a block with your thumbs making an L shape. You can also do this pose with your palms together and your thumbs up. This is my favorite version and it just kind of depends on what's best for you. So go with option one that I showed you before which is raising one leg. Otherwise, squeeze your inner thighs together, flex your top foot, push away from the ground, eyes slightly forward, bend your bottom knee and then maybe gently bring it in. Now, if you feel steady, stay, or you can also bring your bottom leg up. If you get scared, just pull your knees down or split your feet and come right back down. We'll drop the knees in between as the pose is definitely stressful on the upper body and take a quick break. Good. Now, we always wanna make both sides even, just like when we kick in handstand. So lower your forearms down. Exhale, this option, elbows in, fingers forward. Try not to let your elbows go out, okay, or here. One, two, three, up. This time I'll raise my left leg. Again, I don't have the ability to press, so I offer a very small, controlled, keyword controlled, hop. Bend, hop, bend, hop. Now, you can keep letting this leg go over your head and then you can also split your legs too. That's a safe version because then your foot can come right back down and so can your other leg. Lower your knees, shake out those shoulders, maybe even roll them out. Nice job. So again, this pose is hard because it takes a lot in terms of your upper body strength, but also in terms of fear. So like once you get headstand, the fear factor kind of grows into forearm stand and then into handstand. So it's important that if you're feeling afraid that maybe you just take the first option and then when you feel safer, you go for another option. I'm also showing you headstand, forearm stand, and handstand without the wall. So you can always move closer to the wall that's in front of you so that when you raise a leg up, your leg can hit the wall softly, all right? So if I were to use the wall that my paddleboard is on, as my foot hits the wall, it wouldn't damage the paddleboard. That would be the goal of how softly your leg would kick up. Nice job, guys. Again, feel free, rewind, practice um, forearm stand again. Otherwise, let's move to handstand. Stand up slowly. So this obviously is a hard inversion. And in yoga, it's taught with the hands on the earth to start. Not really like the CrossFit or cheerleader version, which is where you kind of throw your hands on your leg up. It's a little bit more focused, but it also requires just some different muscle strengths and awareness. All right, so let's go ahead and ground our palms. Bend your knees. What's really important is the shoulders. So watch my shoulders. They're gonna go on top of my wrist and then back. So if you don't have that ability, all right, what I want you to do is bend your knees and just practice shifting and pulling back and that's where you'll stay maybe with a leg in the air. Otherwise, both hands down, raise one leg up to the sky. Good, so this pose is called standing splits. From here, shift your shoulders on top of your wrist. So see how my shoulders are moving forward and my right heel is now lifted. This top leg is not externally rotated, but it's actually internally rotated. So you want it to face the other leg. Again, there's a lot of handstand cues, so if this loses you, I have a couple how-to handstands as well, so that way you can practice more. Your drishti is forward of your fingertips, so your gaze. You're gonna bend your bottom knee and lift. So we're gonna pull this knee into our chest, maybe. 
Good. Bring it up. One more. Bring it up. Good. Now lower and rest. So today my hamstrings feel super tight. So kicking off the ground feels extra hard. And every day in handstand is going to be different. And so is your success and that's okay. We have two sides. So let's do the other side. Both hands down, one leg up. Shoulders shift forward, eyes go forward. One, two, three, kick. Good. One, two, three, kick. And then maybe when you feel steady, the other leg can go up too. Nice, and then they split to come down. So there's about eight ways to kick up to handstand, right? You have the wall, you have an L shape where the legs stay straight. You have knee to chest that I just showed you. You have one leg goes up, one leg goes who knows where. Both legs shoot up, maybe you jump from down dog. So again, this is all just a very brief how to kind of move into all these different inversions from your very first variation of legs up the wall all the way up. So feel free to give them a try. Again, please make sure your body is warm and ready. And if you feel scared or have questions, please ask because I'm happy to answer them. Again, thank you guys so much for joining me. This is day 10. I look forward to day 11 tomorrow. Thanks guys and have a wonderful rest of your day. Be safe.